Some people have moved to the country and set up farm communes. Others have set up living arrangements in the city. Either way, it's not an easy way to live. Some resent the loss of privacy. Others don't quite have that sense of responsibility to, to live in a large group of people in such close contact. Many of the communes, therefore, have failed, dissolved, fallen apart. One that hasn't, though, is, is this one. A group of 13 people in their 20s living together in an old rented house in southeast Portland. Um, we try every story we try to make as interesting to as broad an audience as possible. And um, if it isn't interesting to a broad audience, uh, the best we can do then is uh, make it short. On a day like today in a town like Portland, it's not much of a choice. You have a hard time finding features and news that uh, really warrants coverage. This is John Stossel from KGW TV News, and I was interested in doing a story on a commune, a communal living arrangement in Portland that was working. And okay, well, what I want to do is uh, prevent stories about communes that have got together and most of them are young kids who weren't that serious about it and most of them didn't last very long because a lot of them folded after about six months or so and apparently yours has gone on for some time and what i want to do is sort of present a this is your lifestyle this is another kind of way of doing it and let you tell about what your problems are and, and if you're being hassled by anybody what the advantages are what some of the problems are about it and Possible film you all doing something together. Like I guess eating be the most simple thing. Um, one request: if you can talk in terms like you're talking to the 15-year-old child down the street, because when you talk in terms of primary and energy, it's impossible with with this media because we don't have the time, and and the average viewer will lose interest. Okay. Thank you, owner, and and we'll be there at 5:30. Okay. Goodbye. Pat, what I think I'd like to do is uh, start on me, and I'll do a stand-up and say there are a lot of communes, and some of them are screwed up, and some work, and some don't. There's one here that has. Do the stand-up inside while they're fixing yeah, dinner with them in the background? Them in the background. And then when I say there's one that has, here it is, and so-and-so. And then you go off me onto them, and then I don't have the information yet, but I'll say, you know, here are these 11 people, Portland State students, and they do this together and that together, whatever they do. But I don't, they, they're all, they're professional people, and they're all very precise about what they are, at least the ones I've talked to are very precise about what they get out of it. They aren't really going to say, hey, it's really groovy or, or really put it far out. Of it. They're going to say it in you know, very precise terms. I'm not sure it's going to work. Are they on, the, like, biodegradable food, that type of thing? Are they involved in that? I don't that? think so. Just a family, and there have been a lot of other families that are a lot more radical than they are. What about, you can have a close? Stand up close? I can't think of one now. Hopefully something they'll say will lead me to it.
that signal mean that we can both come in? Yeah. Where are you going to be eating this stuff? We're going to be, we don't want, it's a little bit of a hassle, but we're going to be eating it here. Um, where will you be fixing it? In the kitchen, which is in here. You're Rick? Pat, that's You're Rick. And uh, some people want to eat, but don't want to be filmed. While they're eating? Yeah. Well, I don't know where to work that. What's your life? Um, if I were going to ask you, is that out of the company? It's convinced me that I want to live in a group of people <laughs> like all my life. Because of the sense of self-criticism and growth as a group, rather than... Okay, that's, if, if you could think of a way to say that in terms of I, I feel this way, rather than you're saying it in, in the clue perfect thinking and so forth. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. You can just think, and then we'll ask you on film once and give a short, like, 20 seconds or so, summarize your whole feelings about it, which not much, but if you could think... Think about that a few seconds, okay? Two seconds. Uh, what, what do you get out of the person? Yeah, um, One important thing is that I feel that okay, living mm -hmm. together with a, a group of people and sharing your resources is an ecological way to live. And that the American standard of living is really harmful to um, the ecology. And the way we're living, we can share, like, we would be normal to be living in five or six apartments and have to have that many washing machines and that many stoves and that many refrigerators. But this way we can just make maximum use of what we have. You want to ask about the, about the meetings they have? They said there was a little bit of a hassle at times so that you kind of brought out things. I think that's technical. That's what? Uh, it's it'd be technical to portray in film. Okay, let's, let's go over again what you get out of it. What are you doing? Um, because I like the spontaneous interaction with people all the time. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Um, can you start over and then elaborate on that? Ask the question, Rick. Right? Uh, okay, but I, I don't want the question in. Well, we can cut that out. Not if he says because. No, just ask the question and then... Okay, and if you could say that one sentence and then elaborate on it a little more. Um, okay. What way do you I really that? like to, to, to be here because I'm people are here all the time that I can interact with. And if I if I come home and I'm tired or if I'm excited about something, there's always somebody here to talk to, uh, to relate that with. And there's always somebody if I'm depressed or happy or um, worried or any any number of other emotions um, that that can keep stimulating me and that I can keep stimulating. And it's a much more exciting I think life than just living in a one-to-one -one situation with my wife or whoever. Good. <coughs> you happy? You would rather not talk. I take it. No. Okay. But would you want to talk a little bit again? Maybe hold your baby? And also, like, it's very important for me to, like, learn how to cook and learn how to do dishes and learn how to take care of a household, which I never was expected to do when I was young. And I never thought I'd have to do. I always thought that that was what women did, you know. But now women are telling me, no, look, you know, you've had all the good things. And uh, there's, some other, there's some really good things that we've got that you haven't got, like taking care of kids and like, like learning how to cook. And I've learned that. And it's really exciting. It's good. Um, I can talk about... Do you want to talk about the skills? Thing? I would, except we, we're burning it real quick. What does that mean? We're uh, using yeah. up a lot of film. You ready, Pat? Sure. Could you just start setting the table like, like you were setting the table? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Okay, Nancy. How, how much sound up do you want before you have the first interview? If there's something that, that would be interesting, that would be fine. Yeah. But I don't see what would be. Pass the butter or giggling or rather than just being a straight interview like we normally do we could just let it run we'll just let them exchange as if we're not there we have our three minute story and 30 seconds of it is them passing the Don't butter why, you know, why some resent the loss of privacy Others don't quite have that sense of responsibility to, to live in a large group of people in such close contact Many of the communes therefore have failed dissolved fallen apart one that hasn't though is, is this one a group of 13 people in their 20s living together in an old rented house in southeast Portland. 
You, you live together, you eat together, you cook together, you uh, support somebody who's out of a job. We try. And you try to do most everything together. No, we don't try to do most everything together. Um, I think because we're, because we have such a variety of interests. It's a group of young people. Right. Best I can get. Between 21 and 30. A college professor. A teaching intern. Um, let's see. A, 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 a hospital worker. Most of them with professional jobs, then, I could say. Well, that's a terrible way to no, say that. No, I don't think you can say that either, because there's such a variety. But you don't necessarily recommend it for everybody else, either. Um, we recommend it for, for as many people who can make the decision to do it. Like, it's not, it's not a game. The group cooks together, eats together, they raise their children together, they share their expenses and they meet to work out their problems as a group. They don't recommend it to everybody, but they say for themselves they wouldn't want it any other way. John Stossel reporting for KGW News. <coughs> The group cooks together, eats together, they raise their children together, they share their expenses, and they meet to work out their problems as a group. They don't recommend it to everybody, but they say to themselves they wouldn't want it any other way. John Stossel reporting for KGW. Didn't quite make it. Yeah, okay. That's good. You don't mind the, the flash, and it has enough tail on it to go through. Yeah, I do mind the flash, but I think we can still get away with it. If that's the only thing you got, if you don't want to. I'd rather use it than, than a layover. Would you? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to be critical about those shots, and they were beautiful shots, just that they don't seem relevant to the, the interview a roll. You know, argue with me if, if I'm wrong. business and I'd like some information from him about Mount Bachelor if he could call me. Five and six are repeats, so they could easily be B-rolled. Yeah. I've got one hour. Thanks a lot. I'll show uh, basically short little scenes, one following the other. I'll show person at the stove working, stirring, person cooking, uh, fixing the beets, 
one making cookies, one washing uh, the carrots, that type of thing. It'll make it seem like there's a bit more activity than there was. It looks like a mishmash now, and Rick was a bit concerned because he didn't think that it would show people working together, but uh, I have it in my mind that when I edit it, I'll show that they are working together, and it'll, uh, when I spice it together, it'll look, it'll look good. Good evening, everyone. A crackdown coordinated by Multnomah and Washington County agents has put a dent in local prostitution business. Senate debate has begun on the SST in what will probably be a close contest. This is Newsbeat. We take you back here on point. John Carter. With sports director Doug Lemire. Right here, Stand Jack. by. Stand by. Jack Camera one, right. About 30 policemen took part in a half dozen rapes last night, and the Multnomah County Grand Jury today launched an investigation into organized prostitution. Ready sound on 10. We need a, we don't have a super on this one though. Sound on 10. Okay. Take one, Q, ready to, in Q here, we can't stand anymore. Uh, roll commercial. You never know. There is, at Penny's, give her a beautiful night's sleep for Christmas and save 20% this week on our brushed nylon sleepwear. The closer it gets to Christmas, the more you'll appreciate Penny's. Five seconds, here we go. Here we go, Dick. Experiments in living are popular these days, especially among young people. John Stossel has a report on one such experiment, a southeast Portland commune. Roll film, take it sound. Some people have moved to the country and set up farm communes. Others have set up living arrangements in the city. Either way, it's not an easy way to live. Some resent the loss of privacy. Others don't quite have the right to live in a large group of people in such close contact. Many of the communes, therefore, have failed, dissolved, fallen apart. One that hasn't, though, is, is this one. A group of 13 people in their 20s living together in an old rented house in southeast Portland. People get to see the way I am when I'm not acting, when I'm not um, just, you know, feeling in a good mood and going out to see people, but as I am all the time. And they can give me feedback on, on the way that they're reacting to me. So I have a better understanding of myself. It's like having a mirror or something reflecting how I am, who I am. And if I, if I come home and I'm tired or if I'm excited about something, there's always somebody here to talk to, uh, to relate that with. And there's always somebody, if I'm 
depressed or happy or um, worried or any any number of other emotions uh, that I, that can keep stimulating me and that I can keep stimulating. You can sit, go and sit down next to somebody on a bus and talk about just about anything. But when you're living with that person and what you talk about, you know, has consequences the next five minutes, um, it makes it a lot different. It makes it a lot more meaningful. It li makes it a lot more real. I now have an opportunity in living with a group of people to be a father and be a mother, um, you know, without actually being a blood relative of people. And like, I can get very close to Matthew or, or kids that I'm living with. Um, most people have a special skill, and when you get them living together, they can share them. Um, Bill teach me how to play the guitar, and I'm teaching other people how to do ceramics. Some people know how to make candles, and they're teaching us how to do those. Like, it's very important for me to, like, learn how to cook and learn how to do dishes and learn how to take care of a household, which I never was expected to do when I was young. And I never thought I'd have to do. I always thought that that was what women did, you know. But now women are telling me, no, look, you know, you've had all the good things. And uh, there's, some other, there's some really good things that we've got that you haven't got, like taking care of kids and like, like learning how to cook. The group cooks together, eats together, they raise their children together, they share their expenses and they meet to work out their problems as a group. They don't recommend it to everybody, but they say for themselves they wouldn't want it any other way. What is the tail pre-digested and uh, just tasteless, like uh, bread. I feel really ripped off. You know? I kind of feel ripped off too because like, it's yeah. like because it was so blah. Yeah, exactly. You know? But we were too, you know, like exactly. we were really coming out blah. I know. The whole thing, you know, it was like there's so yeah. much stuff. Yeah, and what you said, today. what you said, Joe, about you know. My mother's comment about they didn't distort us, yeah. and and you said we distorted ourselves for them, yeah. and that's really where it was. What you know yeah. was what we did to ourselves to be on television. I said I started to say things like, well, I I really get a lot out of it because we share a lot of values that are in common, you know. And so when he said, well, don't talk about that, talk about uh, how you feel, you know, right now. What do you get out of it? And don't put I believe in, and don't put I think in, and don't put this, that, or the other thing in, but just just tell me what I want you to say, you know, oh. kind of thing. And that was really a drag, you know. We were talking about it after watching the story, my wife and I, and a lot of the things that they said they got out of that communal living experience were things that, that uh, I think a lot of people feel they get out of just a marriage. I have the feeling that many of them are, are uh, deteriorating physically, they're letting their their teeth go to pot, and they're they're not maintaining themselves, and they're depreciating in a in a way that's going to be irretrievable, and uh, quite expensive to them uh, ultimately, N and not in terms of money, but in terms of capacity to be productive. It usually ends up that when people in the media look into communal living situations, they bring to it the same old yardsticks they bring to businesses and. Um, government and those things and they say well is it a success or is it a failure and it really isn't make much meaning you know when you think about it because uh, it's just life it's just people getting together and if people decide after a while they're going to split or some of them stay and some don't then it's that's just another part of life uh, there's some really good things that we've got that you haven't got like taking care of kids the group cooks together, eats together, they raise their children together, they share their expenses and they meet to work out their problems as a group. They don't recommend it to everybody, but they say for themselves, they wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> really, Freddie, I think this could be a very dynamite show. <laughs> okay, there's a television news on communal living. What do you think of that? presented the only way that it could be presented objectively. They went and they, the guy was standing there. He asked each person in the community how they felt. Each person? Well, you know, a couple yeah. of the people. They didn't have time to ask all 13 people. That's the only way really to report, I think, is to follow people around and ask the people in the commune. But also to ask the people that left the commune because the person said, well, he could always have someone to talk to when he's depressed and everything. Another person would feel that there's too many people to talk to when you're depressed. Okay, what are you saying? Without 
the sarcasm. Well, it can be just as slanted as anything. They may not pick up everything, and they may show it in just a special way. Why? Because it's what there they want to get across. The reporter had a role in the beginning and in the end. Was he fair? Was he unbiased? In the beginning, he said, most of them have failed. He said, most of them, you know, they're no good. He, he, he said, most of them, he said, most of them have he failed. Said he said, most, many, many have many failed. Many of them have failed. Right. Um, and he said that people aren't going to like the lack of privacy. Many people don't want the lack yeah. of privacy. And there was one... People are generally irresponsible. Yeah. yeah. They don't, they they don't want they the don't responsibility. Have responsibility. Right, they resent the responsibility. Yeah, so okay. that's biased. If, if you're going to... No, it's you, not biased. No. He's presenting the fact. He said that that's how other people feel. He's presenting yeah, the fact. He's making that people feel yeah. that most people are going to not want these, so they're no good. No, no, no. Not he doesn't come right out and state this. See, this is something that's done on television advertising. They never come right out and say something. They imply. They give the implication of something, and this is what the reporter did. It's just the way that we all interpret it. It's different. And the establishment, meaning usually meaning our parents, because they are the ones that set it up, they react to something differently than uh, I do. Uh, okay, are you saying that um, you're sitting there with your mother watching a television program and all the facts are being presented and just because of the difference in age between your mother and you, you're going to react differently? There's no doubt about it, in the age. They call it the generation gap. But there is a difference in the attitudes. I know I have terrible arguments with my parents about, about many things, about marijuana, they, arguments. I know the facts, because I just, I just wrote a paper about it. I know the facts. <laughs> <laughs> and what I know the facts. My parents, my mother does not know the facts, but she thinks she knows the facts, and I'm wrong. No matter yeah, what I, I say, I'm right. wrong. Who knows the facts here? Do you know all the facts? I don't know all the there facts, is. but I know more than my mother knows. <laughs> You're saying you uh, know the facts. The National Health something or other just said that um, if, you, uh, if you smoke two joints a day for two years, it causes... There's proof that shows it might cause brain damage, irreparable brain damage. Oh, where did you hear or see or read this? Newspaper, L.A. Times. The Los Wait Angeles Times? Los Angeles Times. And you believe the Los Angeles Times? Yeah, yeah. something that you read right. and you take it into consideration that it could be true. Uh, you I take, mean, okay, that's a good point. <coughs> Anything that you read, you take into consideration that it could be true. Yeah. yeah. Does it necessarily mean that it is true? No. Well, you know, you, you can pull any set of facts you want from anywhere, so, you know, it's going to wind up being on your own interpretation anyway, right. no matter what you're talking so about. That's Newsbeat, Richard Ross, John Curtis, Doug Lemire, and Jack Phil reporting for the Channel 8 News staff. Ronald Holden reports on Nightbeat tonight at 11 o'clock. And now, John Chancellor and the NBC Nightly News. I'm John Chancellor. All right, you guys, let's hold the basketball.